Um, we're studying about the firstborn and about the process. And um, I want to share some things uh, now, um, actually from my notes. And to be honest with you, I didn't get a chance to make my notes as fluid as I wanted to. <clears throat> uh, therefore, I may be repeating some. But I think that this area is, for sure, an area that should be repeated over and over until we get it. <clears throat> We need to understand stage one, two, and three. If we don't understand that, we're not going to understand so much in the Bible that doesn't say stage one, two, or three. And you just won't know just because you don't see the transitions and you don't see the things that are substituted. <clears throat> but um, tonight I want to sort of focus in more on um, the seriousness of God. Let me reword that. The seriousness of the Father um, concerning his firstborn son. The seriousness of that because it is a big deal. <clears throat> so I'm going to read a little bit and then we'll just comment and see where we go. Um, the decree to kill all firstborns in the land of Egypt, both those of the Egyptians and the Israelites, came from God. God is the one who said all the firstborn are going to die, whether they're Israelites or Egyptians, unless. And what is that unless? <clears throat> okay. Well, even at this point we easily fall back into clumping um, Israel and the firstborn together in a salvation message. And we easily fall to that because that's what we've been taught. <clears throat> that's what we have assumed that we were seeing in Exodus 12 and on. Um, that it was merely a move of God to help his people and to save us uh, from our bondages, <clears throat> which is true for Israel, but, um, but the firstborn is a completely different thing in God's heart. Um, and as, as we'll read, we'll be reminded that he, he allowed Israel initially, at the very beginning, he allowed Israel uh, to be simply redeemed and protected and loved and covered. And um, What? Well, I didn't move from one position to the first, so it's hard for me to, to see that. That must be the mic right there. This thing's supposed to be good, so it shouldn't have to be pointed, but I did a good job. <clears throat> okay, for those of you who were wondering where God's protection was, <laughs> you're not unlike Israel. <laughs> Instead of the firstborn. <laughs> <coughs> All right. <clears throat> so, um, so God is the one who decreed the death of the firstborn. <clears throat> it must be understood that his original right to them, to the firstborn, not to Israel, <clears throat> his original right to the firstborn 
was a right that they all be given in sacrifice in some form. That's, that was the deal. They were redeemed for that purpose. The firstborn were. They were literally saved from death that they might be given in a death that has value. They were saved from a worthless death where it didn't mean anything, you'd just be dead. <clears throat> so that they could be given in a death that has value to the Father. Um, God believes in sacrifice because he gave his own son on the altar of the cross. Okay, well, I, I wrote that. <clears throat> that sounds very simple. Let me just say, can I say it like this? God believes in child sacrifice because he gave his own on a cross. <clears throat> and the firstborn, if that's you, he believes in offering you up. Now we know, of course, that the firstborn is Christ. But what we may not have realized is that, <clears throat> like in the story of the prodigal son, he, th that son was just a prodigal until he first saw things differently in the face of the father and then understood them um, in the offering and the altar and then wisely ate the sacrifice. How many of you noticed the three steps I just took? Okay. That he, he knew, he recognized, and knew something in the face of the Father. But he understood it in the altar and in the sacrifice. And then he wisely ate of it with the Father. That's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And a proper use of those things. <clears throat> so that which is him, the Father, or God, that which is him and that which is of him will exist to be given sacrificially. That is his decree and that is his way and he will not change. <clears throat> now, how shall I say this? Maybe, maybe with a little text in, in it. Bless your little sweetheart if you believe that statement, but God doesn't believe that statement. God is that way. He doesn't believe in sacrifice. He is sacrificial. Therefore, he believes in it because it's who he is. It's the way that he is. And so... I fear that there can be a great bridge between our uh, theology, although we very seldom think of it as theology, our grasp, how about that? Our embrace and our grasp of God and Christ being a lamb and God being sacrificial in his ways. Um, in his mind, let this mind be in you. Um, I think there's a gap, and I think that <clears throat> um, that that the Spirit of God would like to make up that gap. He'd like to bring us into more reality and less uh, teaching on that. <clears throat> Even so, the firstborns are the of the Israelites were redeemed. But that does not mean they were exempt from death, as if it were waived or that death must be carried out in another form. Uh, yes, it does mean uh, that they won't die once, they, once those firstborn came out and they should have been given in sacrifice and did not do that. God provided stage. Oh, man, this side over here has got it. <clears throat> um, 
stage two. But that didn't mean that death wasn't required. It just meant it was placed on someone else. And always and forever, just, just so you know this, just so you know this, any place in your life that death is required and you don't do it, Jesus, Jesus bore that. And we say, well, if Jesus bore it, because this is our terminology, if Jesus bore it, oh, praise God, Jesus bore that. With no thought of we should have been with him and by his life borne that, but we chose that he bear it and then we be freed from living as a firstborn, sacrificially, which is a whole lot of what I want to deal with tonight. Um, <clears throat> Even if it is not exactly, and this is just showing the, 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 how much the Father, you can quit doing that, I'm going to go an hour. <laughs> you're just wasting your little, you're wasting your little butterflies there. Um, <laughs> she can't use a regular piece of paper, they have to be little butterflies. Uh, the Father, um, even if we don't give him the exact lamb that he put in us, if we in any way give some sort of credence to that thing, he at least honors it to whatever degree he can honor it. Isn't that cool? And I can show you a degree, we'll probably, it'll be, you know, I'll probably be 82, but anyway, uh, I can show you a real degree, major degree, that you would never have guessed that that was even included, and yet he fully honored it even against his own people, because that's him. That's that he he. It is his son that he wants. And even a smidgen of, of what sort of looks like that son, he'll honor to whatever degree that honors. It. Which usually isn't much, but it's still, it's still honor, you know. I mean, it's nothing like the honor that, the, that he would do when it's the son in this, like the prodigal son. And he responds back. <clears throat> um, Later in Exodus 34, 20, God tells the sons of Israel that they strictly must redeem the firstborn sons. Okay, so he says you must redeem your firstborn sons. If that's, <clears throat> you know, if that's going to be the direction that you take. So in, that's uh, Exodus 34, 20, and... <clears throat> If he's saying that, you must redeem your firstborn sons, he's saying that to the adults. And something that is that you may not have considered, but when they came out of Egypt, a whole lot of the firstborns were just, some of them were infants. Some of them were little kids, surely because they'd been there for 400 years. Some of them were older, but when the firstborns didn't honor what God said. It wasn't all on the firstborns. It was on the parents who wouldn't give their firstborn son. I'm just glad I was a thirdborn. That's all I can say. <laughs> Um, so he said, you have to redeem the firstborn sons. This points us to the cross. The Jews owed their firstborn offspring as a sacrifice, but not their secondborn or their thirdborn, etc. They didn't, they weren't owed to the Lord, but this is owed to the Lord. The firstborn is owed to him. He, it, he set it up and he said, this is the way it's going to be. And he said, I want my, I am calling my, if you're firstborn, I am calling my firstborn out of you.
Okay. So what? <clears throat> okay. So that, that that means again, not all Israel were firstborns. The vast majority were not. So God cut it down, as it were, and just said, there's probably just going to be a remnant that's going to follow me then this way anyway. There's only a few that are really going to be firstborns and allow the son not just in them, because if you're born again, everybody's got the son. But I find it interesting. It's, he's specifically calling his firstborn son. Now you say, well, isn't the son that's in everybody the firstborn? Yeah, but he's not looking at it like that. He's look, that's my firstborn son, my beloved son, the one whom I love. I'm calling him the one who will give himself. That's who I'm calling out of you. <clears throat> Um, so that there's this distinction between a firstborn, secondborn, and thirdborn, and <clears throat> that distinction isn't due to birth order. The prodigal son's an example of that. Let's see. Jacob is an example of that. Let's see. Ishmael is an, or Isaac is an example of that. Uh, Abel is an example of that. We can go on and on and on and on and on because they're the firstborn most of the time doesn't want to be the firstborn on that front, but he wants to reign and rule and have everything that the firstborn is supposed to have. And the, the, the secondborn or whatever, the latterborn, usually is more under and then they end up Finding what the firstborn means in them. That it's not them at all anyway. It wasn't him either, the elder son. It wasn't the elder one in, anyway. And the big problem with the elder son is just like in the prodigal son story, he wants all the rights and all the authority and all the respect and all of the da 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 da, which is the exact opposite of God's firstborn son. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, that, um, let's see, that distinction is the word, yeah. That distinction is not due to birth order, but to dedication for allowing God's firstborn to be let go out of us. God's firstborn let go out of us. That, that makes you the firstborn. You say, no, no, he's the firstborn. Well, yeah, but you stand as the firstborn because you let the firstborn go out of you. Yes. And is it not true that you're one? Yes. But oneness is more than just being in the family. Elder son found that out. <clears throat> because one is what? One. It's, it's really hard math, you know. <laughs> it's like... Okay, there's only one here. And he's the one. And we're one with the one. And one and one is one. In this case. <laughs> right? Do the math properly. <laughs> Do the math properly. One and one is one. And he's the one. Praise God. Uh, so I'm going to read that, that part again. That distinction is not due to birth order, but to dedication for allowing God's firstborn to be let go. Whoever will do that, not teach it, not believe it, but will let go the firstborn son to the father. Oh, my Lord, the joy. You saw it in the prodigal son story. The joy. And how much joy, how much exuberant joy did the elder son in that story bring to the father the you know the firstborn oh my god it was horrible on the father but he's dancing he's feasting 
And he's loving life again because he's got this firstborn son. That's our father. That is truly our father. That's real now. Okay. So we had this life down here, and we, we say that's real, but that's not really real. That's fairy tale stuff, and we have this life down here. If we really saw this like even just what I'm saying, if we really saw that, then every opportunity to give the father his firstborn son out of us, we would do for the joy of the father. But we're too busy living like Israel, wanting the father to do stuff for us down here. Okay, so we need to just face that is our true reality. That's our true reality because we'll never go to another reality until we face that because we live in a fairy tale land. You know, oh, oh, this is, you know. Let my first, you say to Pharaoh, let my firstborn son go. And we are living as Pharaoh. We got him in there because he was in there. He, first of all, the lamb, the slain lamb, the slaughtered lamb was in Israel because they ate it. And then Israel was in Egypt and Pharaoh wouldn't let, it go, let him go. And so we're Pharaoh. And God is using this time period and these teachings to say, let, you know, okay, I'm, I'm Moses. Let his first born go stop holding him back stop shoving him back and making him a slave to building your little kingdom and your little pyramids that are little compared to the real ones and bossing him around to have him keep doing this stuff for you And never even considering the father because, well, I'm in bondage, but I'm also free to, you know, I may be in bondage, but I'm Lord over the firstborn in me. <laughs> and we seem to be okay with that. I don't know. Um, and, and if we are, we should say, I don't want to be okay with that. We should say that. We should pray that. We should, we should be jumping on these things every second of every sharing, waiting for the Spirit of God to say something to you that will sink in or that will just, that makes sense. That's so outside of me. Lord, help me. Move that on the inside. Make it real so that my walk is not just talk. Amen. For those who rather choose to merely exist as in the family, which is Israel, right? Because Israel was in the family of God. For those who rather choose to merely exist as in the family, the lamb also died so that you could still be saved. Saved from bondage in Egypt and saved from even having to give the father his firstborn son. You've been, you don't have to. This is the good news for carnal Christians. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to do that. Jesus even died for you so that you could just be what you want to be apart from his firstborn son. You don't have to live unto the father by the son. You can live as a Christian in a religious environment. And I believe you're still saved. Uh, are you happy? With, are you okay with that? Thank God for the two that aren't. <laughs> the lamb stands in place of what they owed. They owed him the firstborn. You, you see that? They owed him the firstborn. So the lamb stands in place of, the, of what they owed the father, but decided to proceed differently. They decided to, 
do it another way other than give the father's firstborn son. Again, this shouldn't put us, uh, this shouldn't put us in condemnation or fear that we're going to go to hell. You are secure. Praise God. Can you just rejoice as carnal Christians? Can you just be happy that, you know, well, some can, and that's okay. But if, particularly if they're meant to be firstborns, it's not okay. You know what I mean? Some people feel the call, if I can put it like that. They feel the call to the cross. You know, if you're going to be my disciple, take up the cross, not, you know, go crossways to God, to the Father. So I, I just said that they have chosen a different way. However, the Father said, all firstborn is mine. Okay? All firstborn is mine. They are not their own. They are not their own. They have been bought with a price. The price was what? Don't we read that and we go, well, we've been brought, bought with a price, you know, what, redemption money or no? God slaughtered his firstborn. That was the price. Because he wanted a firstborn and you wouldn't give him the firstborn, so he just slaughtered his own firstborn to make up for what you wouldn't do. He made that offering cover so much. Can you see that? So much. I mean... I don't know. If knowing these realities, I wouldn't want to stand before God just, just knowingly going, well, I heard it, but I don't care. Or whatever. Um, but on the other hand, I wonder, and this is just me, okay, I wonder if not everybody really does hear that or have that at work in them, but some hear something beyond just being in Israel, just being in the family. They hear it, and they go, something in me, that rings true. That, that seems so real to me. That seems more real to me than just being a Christian. You know, and that's why traveling around and going different countries and different places and, and ministering the word, you, many times you can spot the ones who hear the call even for the first time. They just go. I mean, I've had them just sit there dazed, and then when it's over with, they went, wow. <laughs> you know, wow what? They don't know, but it, it, it pushed the doorbell. <laughs> you know what I mean? And now it's up to them to answer, but I think that's what happened. Praise the Lord. I mean, can we praise the Lord, the firstborn? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, um, I put, uh, they've not just been redeemed, but have been redeemed with a purpose. The firstborn, just go back to Egypt, and God, by the lamb, died but remember this, with the firstborn, a light goes on beyond the death of the lamb. The light goes on when they put it on the inside of them, the, the slaughtered lamb. Okay. And I'm here to tell you, God doesn't take putting that lamb on the inside of you lightly. We just call it Jesus. We do. Christianity. We put, I put, do you have Jesus? Oh, yeah. Do you have the slaughtered lamb in you? Well, I hope not. <laughs> but it, especially to firstborns, eating that lamb becomes huge to them because it's huge to the father. Because that's how they became firstborn. They had to put the firstborn on the inside. You see what I mean? I mean, that. that's... Their whole thing. It's not about the lamb dying over here or the blood over there. When they put the blood on the doorpost, 
that's not just to ward off death or the death angel. That is to show forth the death. And we do that, we, you know, and, and I'll give you a little hint now early on, but the, God sees the blood, but he doesn't see blood on us. He sees the blood on our doorpost <laughs> when we've eaten that lamb. and Because remember, the blood was a token of what? A token of that slaughtered lamb that you put on the inside of you and is a proof. It is a shouting proof of the death. I got the death inside of me, the living death. Yes. Not the living dead, the living death, the, the lamb. So I haven't, you know, I haven't explained all that and I'm not going to go any further because there's more to be seen in relationship to that. But I can, I can show you. I can show you in many examples in the scriptures where clearly at the sacrifice where there was no blood, God saw the blood or the, the token, the token of death and stopped the destruction. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, so, so he redeemed us, but he redeemed us with purpose. And the purpose was clear from the beginning. Let my firstborn son go that he may come out and worship me in terms of sacrifice so that we can feast together over this. Remember, all three of those things were used in that deal and certainly was in the prodigal son story and will be in story after story after this because it's an eternal pattern and more than that, it feels like to me for the length that I've been in it and still just seeing vast fields of this, it feels like the laying out of his heart that I'm not just learning some little, I'm going, I'm looking at this and I'm going, I am knowing my father in the dearest place of his heart. Because it is. The giving of his firstborn son the being of a good parent and letting him go, the being of Pharaoh and saying, go, go, you know. <clears throat> Those who accept the death of the lamb for their own freedom, in other words, I accept the death so that I can be free from being a firstborn. <clears throat> Those who accept the death of the lamb for their own freedom are probably not firstborns. Because firstborn see the death and eating of the lamb strictly done that they may be sacrificed. You know, <clears throat> I would say this. Okay, I would say this. If I wasn't a firstborn, I would hate this church. Well, I for sure would hate the guy that preaches on Thursday nights. For sure. I'd hate him. Because that's all he talks about. You know? And it's like, dang. You know, there's a big, thick book. Isn't there something else in there you could preach? <clears throat> Not this fella, because I haven't from the day I saw him. And, that's, and, and I'm not even trying to do this. You know, I, let me just tell you, tell you a little story here. When I was in Jamaica, Deb and I were missionaries there. <clears throat> and um, one of the one of the leaders, not the director, but one of the leaders was having a hard time with me preaching the cross. This is at Berean in Jamaica. <laughs> Berean. Okay. And eventually he called, the director called me aside because of the, the behest of his second in charge who was wanting to hear something more amiable. 
<clears throat> pulled me aside and said, I don't want you to, to preach on the cross anymore. Didn't that happen? Exactly. All right, so I'm going, jeez, I don't know anything else. But I determined that I was going to submit to my leaders. <clears throat> so there was a uh, room, uh, there was a place, a bookshelf down in the boys' dorm where other missionaries had brought books or whatever, and I found a jewel in that bookshelf. It was sermons by carnal people. <laughs> What? Yes, that yeah, that was the title. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> what I, you know, let me be more gentle. Oh, no. They weren't trying to, you know, they were sharing the Lord that they knew in this book, but it wasn't based on Christ crucified or whatever, and that's fine. And they're all going to heaven and thank God for the work that they've done. Do I need to go longer? Or, or are y'all okay? Are y'all good with my, are y'all okay? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, so, um, I decided, because it was, a, the, the letters were really big, I decided what I was gonna do is just find a sermon, but not not study it yet, I was going to set the book in front of me when I was supposed to preach and just read what they said because I didn't think I could, you know. So, so I got up there and, you know, well, um, as Christians, we should, you know, be kind to animals and, you know, whatever it said, I don't remember. <laughs> but anyway, um, and then they would give a scripture. And I would read that scripture and go, da, 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 and the spirit of God would hit me. And I would just go, oh, no, why are you doing this to me? I mean, seriously, this seriously happened. And I'm going, well, I do, you know, and, you know, should I obey man or God, you know? And I'm just going, oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> and it was, it was tormenting. Um, and... Um, well, I won't tell you the end of the story, but, yeah, because it ended in revival, which all of the other people wanted to have, and I was trying to preach Christ, and revival sprang forth out of me because the Lord's trying to say, these signs followed him, <laughs> but it was true, genuine, you never hardly see real revival, wasn't it? It was amazing, and I can tell you all kind of stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so, I best stick with this right here. Um, all that first opens the womb is mine. Mm. All your male livestock, the firstborn of cow and sheep, <clears throat> the firstborn of an ass, <clears throat> no, the firstborn of an ass, it says it right here, you shall redeem with a lamb, <clears throat> the firstborn of an ass, you shall redeem with a lamb. Or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem. Because if they're not going to live as firstborn, you need to redeem them with a the lamb. No one shall appear before me empty-handed without a firstborn in some form. Doggone it, people. Okay. <clears throat> So, get ready. In these scriptures, what constitutes being an ass? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the King James is a little rough for you. 
It's not me. The King James says that. I'm not cussing. I'm Bibling. Okay? <clears throat> Golly. <clears throat> And this is why I've been reduced to Thursday nights. <laughs> Which reminds me, sometime in the future, I would like very much just one time on a Sunday night to share something the Lord shared with me. Not this coming, but sometime. And no is fine with me, because I do stuff like this. <laughs> Got to protect the people from me. <clears throat> Okay, where was I? In these scriptures, what constitutes being an ass? Oh, we, we read that. <clears throat> Donkeys can be stubborn and resistance, resistant to their masters. If they are a firstborn donkey, see how sweet I can be? If they, <laughs> if they are a firstborn ass, then they shall, <laughs> they shall still belong to the Lord. Do you hear that? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of amen. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. I'm a first class, I mean, first born. <clears throat> so if they are a first born donkey, then they still belong to the Lord just as does a first born lamb. But even though he be a first born donkey, what did it say has to happen even though he's a firstborn donkey? What? He has to be redeemed with a lamb that dies. <coughs> but even though he be a firstborn donkey, he cannot become what he is expected to become without a slaughtered lamb. That redeems him from his donkey ways, the slaughtered lamb. Because it has to be the firstborn son in a firstborn. Amen? Amen. You see that? <clears throat> you got, I think y'all are getting this. This is good. This is really good. Thank you for, for your hearts, your openness. Because I'm just amazed over this stuff. If he does not accept the slaughtered lamb death, talking about the ass. If he does not accept the slaughtered lamb death, then his neck must be broken, even though he's a firstborn. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that he doesn't go into a firstborn death. It means he goes into a death that has no value. It's just a death. A firstborn death brings glory to the Father and and ministers life, just like to this donkey, ministers life to it's just, it's just the most valuable thing on the planet. Or just break his neck. Lord, I mean, that's the Lord, right? Well, if he doesn't, then just break his neck. <clears throat> if he does not accept the slaughtered lamb death, then his neck must be broken. In other words, he does not die a firstborn death, but a valueless donkey death. Now, be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, I d no, that didn't embarrass me. Maybe you, but this, what I was going to say, embarrassed me. <laughs> what? No, I'm... I'm much more of a gentleman than I appear. What? That doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Therefore, in Exodus 13, 13, and 15, to redeem to God does not mean to set free or exempt. It means to give to God what he gave to you, a slaughtered lamb. Amen. He gave you a slaughtered lamb. He put it on the inside of you, and he says, now... Put that out. <clears throat> Give it back to the Father. We're so carnal with our offerings. We, 
We think a heave offering is when we throw up and we say glory to God at the end of it or something. Or a wave offering is, hey, brother, you know, going into church or something, waving at him or something like that. My Lord, there's a death in all of this stuff. <laughs> Patty's going, I'm not coming back on Thursday nights anymore. <laughs> this is crazy. This is also the price you pay for an hour. 20 minutes doesn't let me get my wings. <laughs> God was redeeming you <laughs> from a donkey. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Gosh. <clears throat> what? Okay, thanks. All right, so I said there's going to be some overlap and re... You know, because I didn't get a chance to organize it, so please excuse that. <clears throat> Israel is God's son because they put the lamb inside and blood as a token of that death for outsiders. Okay. Um, there's an interesting use of words in there for the for the death angel, because it doesn't use the word death angel. That's the only way I can say it that we understand. <clears throat> and, and not just in itself, but in its relation to some other stories where destruction is coming and only the death of the lamb stops it. And the token of that, not... Again, not necessarily being blood, but the token of the death. Right? I mean, think it, just think about it and let, it, let, it, let the Holy Spirit let it sink in. In fact, it'd probably be better not to any of us to claim that we really got it yet. Because I'm still, I'm still working on it. <clears throat> so Israel is God's son because they put their... Israel is God's firstborn son because they put the slaughtered lamb on the inside of him. I think we can agree to that. Uh, and blood as a token of that death for outsiders. Exodus 4, 22 and 23 says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your, first, I will kill your son, your firstborn. Here the father is showing his seriousness over wanting his firstborn son out of this. Mm, I'm going to read this. It's got parentheses around it, and it's probably me. If you stay stubborn and refuse to give me... Okay, so this is as if the father is speaking. If you stay stubborn and refuse to give me my firstborn son, then I will take yours. And then I wrote, this is not revenge, though that belongs to God. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Um, but it does belong to God, not you and I. It is showing the degree of seriousness and the degree of seriousness he has over getting his firstborn son. Well, that's, that's pretty serious. Okay, so we would go, well, he wouldn't do anything like that today. We're supposed to be the actual real thing of that. That was just a shadow. Amen. Can we not see the seriousness of God? And, I, and again, I don't think this is, should, well, I don't think, this is my opinion, that this should, you know, put us under condemnation or all this kind of stuff. It would be good to know if there's an area that God is more serious than anything else, and we're ignoring it or running over the top of it. I mean, we should kiss the person who says that. No, thanks. I don't want any kisses because Jim did it every Sunday he shared. <laughs> His seriousness is seen in another manner also. His firstborn is a lamb as seen in the Passover lamb. That first Passover lamb was sacrificially offered and the father got his son. So why continue to exact this demand of 
their own firstborn sons from Israel. Meaning, remember he says, when you get into the land, say unto your sons. And when it's those verses about the firstborn, he's talking to his firstborn sons. He's telling every father when, you know, <clears throat> when, why did God do this about the firstborn? So why did he keep doing this instead of just that first one back in Egypt? Well, that should be easy enough to see. So why, did, why continue to exact this demand of their firstborn sons from Israel <clears throat> um, that they must give to his, his, their firstborn from now on? They did so because he perpetually wants his firstborn son out of us. That makes sense. But it makes sense in a great way. Um, it, we could just formulate that God wants his firstborn son and his firstborn son is in me. And um, uh, now that I have his firstborn son, I'm sure he's going to come out son, <laughs> to the father. I'm sure that'll, that'll happen, you know. Um, work days, um, you know, stuff, you know, <clears throat> and I'm sure that he'll be satisfied with that, you know, but this is saying, man, I want him all the time from everyone perpetually, and I want it done as memorial ministry. <laughs> Not just yard work. Amen. Come on. I mean, <clears throat> all right. I might be able to. Well, I'm not sure if I read this la this part right here or not. But I think I'll do it, and we'll see how this goes. Um, Exodus 12, 29, at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. So I put God's firstborn or about death in sacrifice. That's if, that's if you're a firstborn with the firstborn in you, that's what you're called. That's your, for you see your calling. This is it. Okay, <clears throat> they eat death, the sacrificed death, the sacrificed lamb. It was, but that was another's death. That was his death, but they eat that. They display death, blood on the doorpost, which was displaying another's death, but will apply to us. They displayed uh, death, blood on the, the doorpost. Well, okay, I got that. They defeat death. Egyptian death. And we should avoid unsacrificial death. Okay. Well, that makes perfect sense when it comes to salvation, doesn't it? I don't want to die in Adam. <laughs> I'm avoiding that by the death of Christ. Well, we should avoid unsacrificial death. Okay, so let me just say this. Unsacrificial death is probably in the Christian, the Christian realm is um, <clears throat> compassionate ministry. Sacrificial death is memorial ministry. It rises. The other death doesn't rise. <clears throat> the exodus was for death. That means sacrifice to the father, your firstborn, so that they can have fellowship and feast. Death was the reason why God brought them out, and death was the way, the, the instrument he used to bring them out. <clears throat> They exist to sacrifice to the Father. They are chosen for death. The re we're talking about the redeemed firstborn death. You're chosen for that. The redeemed firstborn death.
meaning the lamb died in Egypt and you go out in the wilderness and you sacrifice the firstborn to the father. <clears throat> Uh, the firstborn spared from death to give him death with the lamb. Okay. Okay, what does that mean? The firstborn himself, the firstborn, um, well, let me word it differently. The firstborns, and I know that's not proper to say that, but that helps us to distinguish that many times. The firstborns were spared from death because the lamb died so that he can give the father death with the lamb. But it's a sacrifice going on. on it's, like a, it's a weird term. It's like a living sacrifice, you know. Just, you know, some weird term there. I don't know. And then when the Levites took over as the firstborn, they ministered death constantly at the altar. That was their job. They, their job was an altar and a sacrifice. And so most of what they sacrificed was firstborn. Did you know that? Uh, they were the firstborn. Remember, that's stage three, you remember that? So they are the firstborn but they have the firstborn in them, so they're giving it in the spirit of the firstborn. And God's happy now. <laughs> now God's happy. Praise God. Are we having fun yet? Yes. All right, let's close with prayer. Let's end the madness. Father, thank you for the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, and that's what we want. We don't just want the truth. We want the spirit of it at work in us, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit imparting the spirit of all of this uh, that is Christ, the truth, who, him who is the truth, and the way, and the truth, and the life. And so, Holy Spirit, we call upon you. We know that this is your designated mission and your self-giving task to lift up Christ in this way, the firstborn of the Father, to satisfy the Father with the Son and to satisfy the, the Son with the bride that is after his kind, that is wife of the Lamb, wife of the Lamb. So, we don't have to ask you to do this ministry because it's all that you think about and ever want to do. But we ask you to open our hearts, not just our eyes to things in the word. Open our hearts. Bring us in behind the veil, as it were. And make these things more than ink on white paper or words in a classroom. May we take up the task, Holy Spirit, may we take up the task of pursuing these things beyond the classroom, of studying the tapes or re-looking over the scriptures or the notes and crying out and saying, Father, feed me the lamb, your son. Feed me on the lamb of God. In Jesus' name, amen.